What's up, y'all? Welcome into a solo edition of SSPN. Y'all might hear a little bit of music playing, and, and that is because there is some there. We're using a little bit of the restream features, and it's mainly because this is a solo edition, since it's just me and not Ethan in this reaction, which we'll get to here in a second. Uh, I wanted to add that in just to make it a little bit, you know, a little bit just not my voice, you know, to, to add a little something, a little spice to the video, if you will. Y'all tell me if you like it or don't like it in the comments. But that's besides the point, because welcome into the first edition of SSPN Film Reviews. I'm going to be watching some highlights as they come out from No Ceilings NBA. Shout out to them. I'm going to put the video link here in the description. And I'm also about to pull it up on screen just for a little bit. But to explain this series a little bit more, as No Ceilings NBA releases the full highlights for all the top prospects in the draft or prospects in the Spurs draft range, a lot of that depends on how the lottery goes and how the rest of Toronto's season goes to see if the Spurs potentially have two picks. Um, but once again, that's a little bit outside of the realm here. As soon as No Ceilings drops all the full highlight videos um, on all of these top prospects that the Spurs could potentially draft, we will go ahead and react to them just to give y'all a little extra content outside of the post games and the SSPN lives. Now, I'm going to pull up no ceilings here because I got to say, while these are highlights, they are probably the most in-depth highlights that you can find. Ethan and I use them a lot for our research on our prospect profiles going into last season. Whenever we were watching Victor's tape, No Ceilings was, was the place to go. Um, and they will continue to release these, like I was saying earlier, as probably as, as March Madness wraps up. And also the other prospects that are in the NBL, like Alexandre, um, and also those in, in the G League on Ignite as well. Uh, as that season comes to a close here soon. But with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump into these measurables and these stats here. Now, okay, I know I said I was just about to jump into them, but let me give one disclaimer here before we do that. This is the video I'm pulling up right now. I will not be showing this while I'm reacting to it. I know it's sad, it sucks, but to be blunt, me and Ethan just don't wanna get copyrighted. But with all of that housekeeping out of the way, Let's jump straight in to this SSPN film reaction, review, breakdown, whatever you want to call it for Alex Sars full season highlights. So if you look at the stats, you know, nothing too crazy, especially when you look at the field goal percentage, you might see, oh, 27% from three. He's not a good shooter. Go watch the video. <laughs> Go, go watch the video. I've watched a little bit of Alex Sar highlights already, just kind of leading up to this point. And that is definitely one of his strengths. It's it's kind of similar to Wemby in the sense that the percentage wasn't that great last season, but definitely has shooting ability. I would say that you could argue that his shooting ability might be a little bit more concrete coming into the league uh, than Victor's. Now, maybe that's a little bit controversial, um, but I think if you watch the tape, you just see him in so many pick and pop and catch and shoot situations um, that it's kind of undeniable that that's a part of his game. And he also has great form on his shot as well. The stats aren't crazy. You know, I could sit here and try to act like I have all of the knowledge and, and try to pontificate <laughs> about how, okay, well, here's all the nuances and, and all that type of stuff. But what I'm just going to say instead is he's playing in the NBL. It's a different league. He's only 18 in part of their next stars program. The same program that LaMelo Ball played in out there, uh, as well as RJ Hampton as well. That'll kind of give you an example of how sometimes, you know, it can look really promising for somebody or how it can go really promising for somebody like it did for LaMelo. Uh, and then RJ Hampton kind of on the other side is floating around the G League for the most part, uh, from my understanding. But aside from LaMelo and RJ Hampton, the next stars program that the NBL has, um, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I'm sure that may impact his stats, how many minutes he plays, um, et cetera, et cetera. Because all these guys in these in this next stars program, they're only there for one year. It's totally for the purpose of developing and getting to the NBA. Um, and and these teams, otherwise, you know, all of their teammates are pro basketball players who are like on contracts with these teams moving forward. So I could see how, okay, we're only going to play Alex Sar 18 minutes a game. 
because the rest of these guys are actually the core of our team for our franchise moving forward, if that makes sense. Um, now, like I said, once again, I don't know that for a fact, uh, but I'm sure that some of that has to play into his stats and his percentage uh, on top of just the amount of minutes he's playing as well, because there's a reason this guy is like unquestionably the number one, or maybe not unquestionably, but con the consensus this season is that Alex Saar is the number one prospect on the board overall. And that kind of gets us, or, or that could get us in to another discussion about the draft itself and its depth. I'm not going to get into that here today, but what I will say is I think when you watch Alex Saar's highlights, like we're about to, you'll kind of understand why there's all this appeal for this guy. But seven foot one, a little bit bigger than I thought whenever it came to his weight. I knew he was a seven footer. Um, I thought he was a little bit closer to 200 pounds. Maybe he's put on some weight this season playing for the Perth Wildcats, uh, but up to 217. He is 18 years old. He's listed as a forward or a center. Since this is a Spurs channel, if the Spurs were to luck out and somehow win two lotteries in a row and decide to take another seven foot Frenchman, I would say that he would definitely be a four at that point for the Spurs. Maybe there still would be some, you know, some rotations out there where he ends up playing the five. But if the Spurs pick him, he's definitely going to be more of a four. And I think that his skill set fits that as well as his play style, his mobility, the way he moves with the ball, all that stuff. But enough of me yapping. I'm going to take it off. I'm sorry, guys. You got to look at me now. Um, but we're going to go ahead and turn on these highlights in the background and you guys will hear my thoughts. So if you guys want to pause the video, you want to go put up these highlights on another screen while you're watching me or take me off the screen, play the audio in the background while you're watching the highlights as well, go ahead and do it because we're jumping into it right now. So obviously to open up, they got the stats, 9.6 points, 4.5 boards. And let me, let me bounce back a little bit. It stopped me to start and a block and a half, of course. But here we go. We got the first play. It's his scoring starting off a lob to start off the highlights here. The second play, he creates some space, puts himself on a good spot on the left wing splash. Now he's kind of moving off ball here, taking a guy off the dribble, fadeaway jumper, using his post moves kind of in the mid range, a little bit over the free throw line, gets it over a, his defender. Seven foot one, man. You see him driving to the rack. We see him getting a put back. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to pause right here. We're only 42 seconds in, but already we have seen him space the floor. We've seen him catch a lob. We've seen him go off the dribble and make a mid range jumper. And then we've also seen him get a put back. So a very versatile skill set and a lot of potential in kind of all of those areas but those are all different skills you know you've got some catch and shoot you've got him in the pick and roll game you'll see him in the pick and pop game as well but then you also see him as a glass cleaner and and somebody who's trying to get putbacks as well uh, on top of the iso ability that we saw and i know that's only 42 seconds but you're going to see more of that as this continues all right so we got the next play here he's facing the floor on the right wing he's going to take a guy off the dribble drive inside has to go off his pivot foot but hits a fadeaway jumper so able to create in space even when his dribble drive is stopped he catches one at the elbow drives inside just uses his length to get a layup over the top of a guy now we see him trailing in transition gets a big dunk taking a guy off the dribble from the left corner doing a spin move little hook here using his size in a mismatch, just grabbing it, dunking it down. Here's him in transition, having a little Euro to move his defender off of him, slams it inside. Lots of versatility here from Alexandre. He's able to be acrobatic, whether that's in the mid range or contorting himself around the rim. Some of this stuff, it's, it's hard to even describe verbally, but right here, at about the 130 mark, he just realized he was open when he was looking to kind of go through the offensive set and just pulled up easy three. Um, we've seen mid range, we've seen two threes already, scoring at all three levels so far, about two minutes in. Taking another man out of the post. Great off ball movement. Found some space, got an easy, easy dunk on a dump off. Dribble handoff, roll. 
going through the middle of the paint, easy layup. You could say contact. There were guys around him, but because he's so big, you know, they're not going to try to foul. If, if these guys are like six, seven, six, five, they're not going to go try to contest a seven foot one dude and then give him an easy and one. Um, but is able to finish through contact. And sometimes kind of, as I was just describing, he, I'm, I'm looking for the word here. He basically, um, dang it, man. I can't believe I'm forgetting the word here, but it's basically just that he forces the defenders. He deters. That's the word I was looking for. Thank y'all for bearing with me there. He deters defenders from contesting his shot because of potentially fouling with his height and the length that he has. Because if you go up and try to put up a contest on this dude and he's got a seven foot one wingspan, I I know it's not actually seven foot one, but he's seven foot foot one tall. And then he's got a giant wingspan. I don't know the exact numbers, not as big as Wemby's, but still pretty big. You go up and contest. A lot of times you can catch wrist or arms, easy foul for him. But enough of the blabbering. Back to the highlights. Nice pick and pop spacing, leaves him wide open, top of the key, splash. They give it to him in the left corner. He's looking to create, tries to force a little back door. The cut isn't there, just decides to pull up from the elbow, splash. Here he's playing off of some of the other ball handlers. In a little bit of a motion set, comes off the left wing. Not, I don't know if it was off a screen, but regardless, there was space created, wide open, pull up, catch and shoot, splash. They give it to him on the left wing this time, or excuse me, the right wing. He takes a pick, can't really find too much space, but he's so much taller than everybody that he's at the elbow, just pulls up mid-range jumper. Here's him in transition. Has a couple men to beat. Not necessarily a, not a charge. You know, it was close to a charge, but he was able to force a dude to fall and just got a little bucket there. So that was using some physicality there. So as much as he looks slender because he's seven foot one, he's got some strength in, in that slender frame. But still, an and one there using his physicality. That's the first time we've really seen that. We maybe saw a couple dunks there, but that was physicality on a layup going through contact and finishing. He's driving in transition, beats two people off the dribble, contested the entire time. Falling in the air, still drains it on an and one layup. A little backdoor pass under the basket, two guys right in front of him. He's seven foot one, just drops it in anyway. Lots of length here. The length is such a benefit. We've seen that with Victor. He's showing his little off the dribble mid range jumpers he can make too. Now he's on the right wing, wide open in a catch and shoot situation, splash. Puts his shoulder into a guy after getting a ball under the basket, goes up, gets fouled, and one. Does that again here on a dunk, man. Just postered a dude under the basket. These are NBL guys. This is not the same physicality as the NBA, but it is also not a bum league either. These are pros. Here's a little pick and pop. Goes outside. Had a wide open jumper, or not a wide open jumper, but had space to pop a three, but decided to drive inside and get a layup around the big man. Here's him in cleanup duty, just... Tips it back in on the right wing once again. Wide open three splash. Driving inside. Gets an easy dunk over his defender after he beat him. Got fouled to another and one. Lots of and one dunks. But you're also seeing him drive from the three-point line. Because, you know, as I've been mentioning, he's someone who can knock it down from there regardless of the percentage. And he's got a great shot when it comes to just the fundamentals and the technique and everything. But he's a guy who will not just, because of that ability, he can pump fake and it's going to get guys jumping, which allows him to drive inside. But even if they don't pump fake, teams are going to crash and close out hard. I know crash is usually a term used for the boards. But, you know, if you're in a double team and then you've got to sprint back in rotations, we've been talking about that with the Spurs recently, and you've got him on the three-point line. I mean, that's somebody that you got to key in on if you're facing Alexandre Sar in the NBL. And because of that, teams are going to be on their P's and Q's because he could pull up from three. But the threat of that allows him to drive inside, and he's got the skill set, man. He's got – there. I can see why he is the number one overall rated prospect in this draft because despite the stats, he has got – he is showcasing legitimate skills in the post-up, 
in catch and shoot, off the dribble, creating his own shot, finishing through contact, being a cleanup guy. And, and really that just all ties into his fluidity and his movement at, at the height that he has. He, he, he almost reminds you of KD a little bit with some of the pull-up mid-range off the dribble jumpers at the elbow, even reminiscent of Devin a little bit. Um, but you know, with the height, I would say that KD is a little bit more of, of a realistic uh, comparison there. Now, I'm not saying maybe he's going to score at the volume of KD. Granted, he is the potential number one overall pick, so he's going to have high expectations. But what I'm trying to say is it's reminiscent of the way that he can score off the dribble and move at the size he does. Um, so yeah, I love the mobility. I love the fluidity. It's reminiscent of Wemby to an extent, too. Another French seven-footer that can dunk, shoot, and put the ball on the floor. I mean, can play inside, can play the post, can play physical, but also has the skill set to kind of be that unicorn, as I mentioned. Or I don't know if I've mentioned that yet, but kind of like Chet Holmgren, Victor Wembanyama, Laurie Markkinen, even to an extent. Um, guys that are seven-footers that can put the ball on the floor and kind of look like guards. But he's still got a lot of skills in the post and, and, and cleanup duty all, that traditional bigs need to have anyway. We'll go back to his highlights here. He's got a highlight on the right wing. Wide open three, splash. In transition, spaces the floor correctly. He's on the left wing this time. Pull up, a little bit of contest, splash still. Blocks a dude at the rim, running in transition. Teammates are watching him. Got it to a teammate in the left wing. Alex spaces, goes to the top of the key, gets it, drives inside to the left block. Decides he's not going to get an easy layup there. Step back mid-range jumper, easy. Gets another one of the right wing on the next possession. Just drives past three dudes using his speed. Easy layup. He does that on the other end from the left wing in a one-on-one. -on -one. Now we got a little pick and pop, top of the key, splash. He can shoot, man. I don't care what the percentage is. You watch these highlights. This dude's a sniper. And and, and at seven foot one, with the way that he moves, you know, he's not slow whatsoever. That's something I also haven't mentioned. He's got a lot of speed for someone at his size. He's beating a lot of dudes off the dribble, getting layups. But he can pick and pop fast, if that makes sense. And if you give him an inch of space, he, he's going to pull up. The shot's already going to be in motion. And because he's seven foot one, it's going to be hard to contest and it's going to be a splash. In a lot of these pick and pop situations too, or, or pick and rolls for that matter, he's getting himself in mismatches. And when he's in mismatches, he's either going to drive inside and dunk, get an easy layup, or he's just going to have a turnaround jumper off the dribble. A lot of good turnaround fadeaway jumpers here from Alexandre Saar on top of the catch and shoot. At the end of his offensive highlights here, we're starting to see him really work in the pick and roll game. Drive inside, get some easy layups. We're also seeing that sometimes when he's kind of working almost similarly to how Zach works as that hub in the post, kind of near the elbow, in between the elbow and the three-point line, well, he's kind of doing it at the top of the key or just around the top of the key, maybe even to the wings. But he's behind the three-point line, and he'll kind of put the ball, you know, over his head and he'll survey see if there's a pass there and if there's nothing there if they give him this the space he'll just pull up and drain it he's done that a couple times he's also waiting out of the post here on the right block just a little step back mid-range jumper driving in transition spin move lots of contact but has the touch driving inside once again another spin move contest gets it Trailing in transition here, gets it at the top of the key, drives inside, easy contested layup. I say easy, it was contested, but he's seven foot one. So if he gets a step on you, it's just he's gonna go, he's gonna go up and score, at least in the NBL. We got another lob for him here. He can do that too. A lot of different skills here from Alexandre. Taking a dude off the dribble, lots of dribble moves, turnaround, fadeaway, jumper, bucket. His jumper is pure, man. That's that's really what I'm noticing. He's big bodying, you know, some mismatches as well. So he's smart. He's going to look for the mismatch and then he's going to take advantage. Just jumped all over a dude. But that concludes his uh his scoring highlights here. We're moving over to the playmaking section for no ceilings. So shout out to them and the way that they section off these highlights.
So here's his playmaking. He's taking the ball up the floor like Wemby. Nice backdoor read, easy dunk for his teammates. Gets one, drives inside. That creates, uh, that draws two when he's driving inside, feeds a dude in the right corner, splash. Lots of good vision. He's he's finding he's finding open guys regardless of the situation, but he's having some good backdoors too, man. Oh my gosh. Gets a board, goes coast to coast, gives it up to a teammate, easy floater. He gets it inside, dribbles it back out, has a lot of guys around him, drives inside again, finds a cutting backdoor guy. That's three backdoors now that I've counted. He's falling out of bounds, throws it to a wide open three point shooter, gets it. He's driving inside, got three guys around him, gives it to a cutter going backdoor. That's four now. A fifth backdoor here because he's getting double teamed every time, it seems like. Gets a nice block here. Now he's dribbling it down the floor, going coast to coast, but sees an open teammate under the basket, gets it to him, bucket. Pick and pop situation. He gets at the elbow, finds a wide open three-point shooter on the left wing, splash. He gets a rebound here, finds a dude full court, easy layup. Pick and pop situation, gets him in the pick and roll. A lot of defenders around him, finds a dude in the left wing, wide open, splash. Here he is again, trying to bump inside, finds a defender right under the basket, easy dump off, low layup. Got a lot of great vision, man. Helps when you're 7-1, but it helps when you're 7-1 and, and teams are double teaming you a lot. But still, these are not just basic passes that he's making. He's out of the post here in the right wing. Finds a dude cutting to the top of the key. Splash three. He's got two guys on him. Cross court all the way to the left corner. Another three. Splash. And those are his playmaking highlights. So I saw a lot of backdoors, him finding three-point shooters, whether that's out of the post, in transition, whatever it may be. Love the playmaking I just saw there from Alex. Lots of shades of things that the Spurs would like. But let's get on to his defense here for the last about four minutes of this. I'll just swat at a man. He's trailing guys, stays around the rim. They're trying to Tony Parker dribble around him. They pass it off to another post, gives it back to the same guy. He still gets swatted. Once again, this is the NBL man, but he he's very active. I know I'm like, that was like the first defensive play, but these guys are trying to dribble around him, man. Like every play I've seen, and he's, he's just the rim protector. He's not getting a three seconds, but he's making sure that he's putting himself in a position where he has an opportunity to swat people at the rim, and that's what he's doing, man. This this last highlight, I got to pause here. This last highlight, they ran like an entire set. He even went out to the three-point line, but after they went through their pick and roll and the, the man just ended up, or the ball handler, excuse me, just ended up keeping it, he just faded back. He, he got up to guard the pick and roll, faded back, saw the guy still had it. He's driving to go get a layup, swatted it. Just followed him, but he's not over committing, so you know guys aren't able to just drive past him either. But he's also you know, doing a good job is kind of like a free safety, if you will. He's just almost roaming, but he's never out of position, if that makes sense. Back to the highlights. A center going up and a post up, easy swat. Here, there's another guard trying to go inside, gets past his man, but Alex is there at the end, kind of like Wemby, you know, bringing the help and just swats him. Rebound. Another guy driving inside, trying to get a bucket at the rim. Easy block. He misses the rebound here, and now a dude tries to big body him going up. Blocked. Do not try to get a layup on this guy. Another dude just tried to go up and under. This other dude just tried to poster my guy, and he is just swatting people. He's seven foot one. I don't know what his wingspan is, but oh my gosh. This guard just tried to go up on him. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? If if Nick Claxton, we were just talking about that recently. If Nick Claxton can't get a layup on Wemby, this guard is not getting a layup on Alexandre Sar. God bless him. Better than I'll ever be. But oh my God, that was just... I'm sorry, I got to stop and laugh here because this dude was like 6'2". I'm like, I don't know what you were thinking there, buddy. We got a man driving inside, trying to poster him. Swat. 
He's guarding a pick and roll, picks up the point guard, SWAT. I mean, so he's able to, he wasn't even necessarily getting beat by the point guard because he's so nimble and, and fluid and fast, even with his size. He was behind him a little bit, but I think that was because the block angle was better. I think he can stay in front of a lot of guards. Granted, this is the NBL. It, the speed's going to be different in the NBA. Let me stop myself. But he is someone who does... He, he, they were just doing a pick and roll, and he just picked up the point guard in the pick and roll. Or even or the shooting guard, whoever it was. It looked like it was a point guard here on the highlights. But he picked up the ball handler in the pick and roll and followed him, covered him the entire way towards the basket and swatted him. You know, normally the seven foot one dude, even if they are a little bit skinnier, they're staying with the big, but not Alexandre Saar. Dude just tried to get a fadeaway mid-range. He still had the length to jump late and block it. Like I said, I got to figure out his wingspan. Oh. This poor guard just went up against the guy he was guarding, you know, thought it was a one-on-one, -on -one, and he just ran from the opposite elbow. They were on the left block in the paint. He was on the right elbow, and he just reached his hand out as far as he could with as much effort as possible, got a block. It's it's reminiscent to Wemby. And here, looks like, looks like the old Perth Wildcats made the NBL Finals because here in the highlights, there's a whole big Finals logo on the graphic and on the court. So that's a good sign for, for our boy Alex as well. But back to the highlights. These dudes are trying to get layups, driving inside, putting their shoulder into them, and it's just not working. And they keep doing it. <laughs> I wish I had I wish I had more analysis here on the blocks. Okay, here we got somebody on a post up who kind of beats him, but he still blocks him from behind. Most of these, though, man, these guards are just driving in, and he's just in the right defensive position as a rim protector, and he's putting his hand up, and it's just going straight into his hand, man. I've seen this on multiple different angles. Y'all just got to go watch this. Like I said, I wish we could show it, but we don't want to get copyrighted. But these guards, man, it doesn't matter which guard it is. It doesn't matter if it's the guy that he's guarding. He's just in the paint, in the right position, and they go to the rim, and he's just swatting them, man. He's taller than most people in this league. I will say that. So, you know, that's that's going to be different when he gets to the NBA. But, see, he just came behind a mid-range jumper after he was guarding somebody on the three-point line because of the rotations and swatted that. Everything before that was really at the rim. Here's another one at the rim, a guard trying to get it up and under, just all ball. He, he knows how to... Not foul. That was the other thing. Same guard tries to get another layup, swatted, pinned. He's pinning dudes against the rim, too. Or, excuse me, against the backboard. Here's a step back three point jumper, swats it just like Wemby. And that was a guard, too. One of his teammates just got beat on a pump fake, but he's there, swats it at the rim. Another dude trying to fake him out who's like 5'9, easily swatted. That's why I'm saying. I don't know why these guards keep, keep trying, but. He's a great help defender, too. He's hustling. There's a couple plays here late late in these highlights where his teammates are getting beat off the dribble, but he's there at the end of the day to go get the block. I don't think I've seen a steal yet. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but all of these blocks are really good. And I would think that with, with his length, he'll be able to pick some guys' pockets, too. He's covering, covering a guy in isolation, top of the dribble point guard. There's a steal. Ask and you shall receive. That was a great pickpocket steal. A dude was trying to cross him up. He got it there, dove on the floor, turnover. Gets another steal here. I think the, the highlights might end with some steals from him as soon as I asked. That's exactly what's happening. Double teaming guys, using his length, poking the ball out. You love to see it, man. You love to see it. That's It's like as soon as I asked for it, no ceilings heard me. This wasn't planned, I swear. He's just putting his... It's, it's very... It's, it's very reminiscent to Wemby. It's not the same thing as Wemby, but it's very reminiscent. He's obviously not as big as him, but when you're seven foot one and you can move as the highlights end, um, it's going to be pretty easy for you to just put your hand in there and pickpocket a guy. So yeah, man, that wraps it up. That wraps up this SSPN film review. Just to do a little bit of a overview, if you will, on Alex, my thoughts here. 
I kind of already mentioned all of the offensive stuff. Has a lot of skills, has a lot of finesse, but also has a lot of fundamentals. That's really what I noticed. He's got fundamentals. You see flashes of fundamentals everywhere, whether that's when he's using his post game offensively, in the catch and shoot, you know, or off the dribble creating his own shot. Defensively, he's a block menace. He's a rim protector, but he's mobile. So that allows him to be even more of that. He's not eight foot wingspan, <laughs> as we have been spoiled to this year as Spurs fans, but I'm sure it's up there. And the French Twin Towers defensively, I'd like to see it, man. I'd like to see it. I cannot, I cannot lie. Playmaking wise, great backdoor vision. Um, I love the way I also mentioned this offensively. I loved how we can kind of use him, or I say we, we'll see how this all plays out, but how the Perth Wildcats used him kind of as an offensive hub. And if some of the motion, you know, that's going to distract the defense anyway. But if there's nothing free, if it's hand down, man down, just pull up and shoot. If, if you know, nothing really comes of, of the cuts or, or the motion set that they're running. Um, I love that he has the confidence and that they gave him the freedom to do that too. Let me see here. That's playmaking. Hmm. A lot of wide open three point shooters that he was able to find too, whether that was out of the post or off the dribble. Um, really good vision though. I, I liked I liked the way that he was looking for passers a lot of times. There were there were a lot of times too when he was passing where he might be mid shot, um, but he'd find a better look. Or maybe he'd think he was going into a shot like a turnaround, but instead of pulling up with the jumper, he'd see there was a wide open shooter on the wing because of the set that they were running, and he'd just dish it there. Um, but really good vision overall. Lo love the, f the flashes. That was the first time I would really watched his passing highlights, and I was very satisfied. Um, defensively, like I kind of already said, block machine, man. And he's able to poke, poke and get steals too with his length. That pretty much wraps it up. Thank y'all for hanging out and watching this one with me today. Tell me your thoughts on Alexandre Sar's full season highlights from No Ceilings or whatever highlights you've watched coming into this draft season that is approaching us quicker than we think. We appreciate you guys hanging out. We'll catch y'all later.